This is a 1500 gallon per hour bilge pump. When I measured this through six feet of hose and a little recirculating tub, it actually put out about a thousand gallons per hour, uh, not 1500, but looks like a decent enough design. The only issue is there's a little crack in the housing right here. And that makes me wonder if water's able to get in through that. So this is just a perfect opportunity to open this thing up and see what it's actually made of. Looks like there's some screws here, part of the volute. Okay. I'm honestly unsure how these wires are supposed to uh, come out of here. So I ended up just cutting away that rubber and I'm able to put the cord in now, but this motor, it's sort of stuck on something. Nothing's hitting its bottom and it's got like, it's got tons of wire. So there's something up at the top that's holding on to this. This might have to get broken because I really want to figure this out. Well, my non-destructive testing here has, has taken a turn for the worse. Um, I don't, I don't think this is going to twist off. It might just be like something that clicks, clicks in there, which is why I'm going to give it a, give it a last go first, but sorry. Well, it's a particularly sturdy housing. I will give it that. Catch you in a minute. Don't you worry. We'll have her good as new in no time. Right at the very top here, right where the brush thing is, there's a little piece that sticks out the edge and it's hitting this white plastic part. And that is why it's not coming out. Maybe I should work on pulling the impeller off and seeing if we can go that way. Okay. That popped right off and there does seem to be a rubber seal here with a little grease on it. Oh, there is in fact an O-ring around the outside of all of this. Okay, that's starting to make some sense here. But let's pull this apart so we can have a better look. Okay, so as I pull the whole motor up, it looks like there is a bit of a heat sink wrapped around the motor, which is preventing it from coming out the top here. And instead of going down, it's literally right on this brush here. There's a little plastic nub there, and that is what's hitting the clearance. So I'm just gonna be able to cut that off. Let me make sure that I can show you what I'm talking about. That tiny little nub that you could barely see is keeping it from going down. Ta-da! Okay, so I think I understand how they're sealing this, but let me just clean up the workbench a little bit because this is just getting to be a bit of a mess. So what we've got here is in this housing, there is a rubber O-ring around the outside, and this plastic piece right here can press up against that rubber O-ring, keeping everything at the top of the can waterproof. At least it used to. <laughs> The wires that come out the top here just have a rubber plug with no adhesive that sort of sticks into this hole. And I guess that's also waterproof, at least at low pressures. Now the motor mounts onto this. This guy right here, there are two screws. These screws right here that hold this little mounting plate on. And then this mounting plate fits nicely right inside there. So you can see that's very slightly loose, but essentially with that bolted to this, this sticks on here and there's a rubber seal. There's a little bit of grease on that rubber seal. This is a five millimeter shaft, 4.98, but whatever. That's a five millimeter shaft. And it seems that the way they keep water from getting up into this motor is a 
piece of rubber. It's a little soft, flexible piece here. So a close up of the seal here. So you move the rubber over, you can see it's just a little metal spring there. So this clips on like this, but I'll put it on backwards just to show you. So that basically just holds the rubber tight. A little bit of grease on there, and I guess that is all that it takes to keep water out of your electric motor. And it seems to be pressed in pretty nicely, so it might even be glued around the outside to keep water from going in. But that's all that's keeping water out of your pump, which might explain why these pumps seem to only last for like three or four years if they've, you know, been wet and running. Maybe a little bit of water can work itself up and start messing with these bearings or something like that. It's a decent sized motor. And what's kind of cool is this, this whole system, essentially, this tube goes out the tube. This is your volute, so that clips in there, directing everything out, and that's your snail shell. But if we look at this from the other side, motor sitting in there, holding this guy, which faces straight down like that and spins around. And you can see it's a little bit uh, closer right here. And then it gradually gets larger and larger and larger until it goes out. So this is a reasonably efficient design of the 1500 gallon per hour bilge pump relative to those 1100 gallon per hour bilge pumps where this water exits like up here. So it's sort of like an indirect passageway. So this might be a little bit more, um, I don't know if the, the water flow is a little bit more efficient or not. But here's the issue. If you were going to try to make an electric dredge, you can get bilge pumps of all sorts of sizes once you know how much actual wattage you're going to try to play with. I believe this is roughly 70, 75 watts. I'll put something on the screen because I did do a test um, measuring the wattage of this uh, in the water. and. You would essentially have this whole thing assembled, this coming out the bottom, and everything that sticks out of, let me just toss this together here real quick. Everything that sticks out of here would normally be inside there, this even with that black O-ring right there, just like that. What you could do is you could actually, either keeping this piece right here and just replacing this with a 3D printed part as well as your impeller. Um, you could cut the whole thing out if you wanted to, but given the, the space we have here with all these screws and how that sort of fits in, there's, there's room to print something here. And my theory is that this impeller is very small. It actually has a diameter of the circle, 36 millimeters. So these little impeller blades come right up to the edge. It's 36 millimeters across. And my theory is that if you were to increase the diameter of this impeller, uh, you would increase the pressure or the lift that this pump is capable of. So this is not a very high PSI pump. I believe it says five meters of head. I don't even think it could do that, to be honest. But uh, yeah, if you increase the diameter of this, you'd get more pressure. Of course, that would put a lot more load on the motor. You'd burn out your motor. But what if we look at it in this orientation and we just shorten these down a little bit. So you're going to get higher pressure, but less flow. And you could just 3D print these, you know, with an educated guess for the dimensions until you're still burning the same watts, whatever wattage this is, you'd be burning those the same watts, but you would have a less water coming out by volume, but at a higher pressure. And of course you could print the volume to go along with it. You can get in some pretty advanced designs like little turbine blades that are all spinning and um, it would be really interesting to experiment. Can you make a more efficient impeller that's designed for a higher pressure and a lower flow, which would be more conducive to a eduction nozzle on a small dredge? That is definitely a future project. This is just here to show you guys uh, kind of how these things are going together. I was just really curious how the heck they keep the water out of these. And it looks like it's just a little rubber seal there, bit of grease on it. And there you go. So I hope that was interesting to people who clicked on the title of this. I'm sure I titled it something like, let's break down a bilge pump and see what it looks like inside. That's what it looks like inside. Thank you for watching. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you next week. Obviously, designing and 3D printing a 
electric dredge would be a really interesting project. If you could make something that was legit, uh, say a, a two inch dredge that could run on tool batteries or, you know, just get a Pelican case with like a deep cycle 12 volt lithium or something, figure out what all the power numbers actually are. And, you know, it'd be a whole engineering project that I think would be really interesting to do. Um, just, for the fun of it. And potentially there'd be some people in the United States that would actually be able to use something like that. So yeah, let me know what you think about that project. Is that something I should do? Should I get into 3D printing? Talk to you guys next time. Thanks for watching.